human brain. It serves as a complex roadmap of the world we experience. It gives directions to our thoughts and perceptions so we arrive at our destination safely and efficiently. But people with neurological brain disorders like schizophrenia or manic depression have been given a map with roads that don't meet where they should, bridges that are missing, and routes that lead to nowhere. If you met a fellow traveler misguided by his map, would you judge him and leave him stranded, or would you get out your map and help him find his way? Hi there, I'm Joe Tyler. Are you stressed out, wigged out, freaked out, feeling anxious, angry, or depressed? Want to know how people with real mental health problems learn to cope? Keep it right here and get the latest word from experts in the field like me, <coughs> Joseph Tyler, a consumer service assistant for King County Hospital, a speaker for the cause of mental health, as well as the state of Nevada NAMI president. Medications and therapy are the cornerstone for treatment for over, well, how many million people in the United States, somewhere around? 25 million? Or 25 to 30 million. Yeah. 30 million. Here in Rice and the Sigma, we take you, the viewer, into the brains. We got the old noggin here. Into the brains, biochemistry that is mental illness, and back to reality safely. Here in Rice and the Sigma, we find hope for people whose lives have become unmanageable. So stay with us for the next half an hour as we erase the stigma for people with brain disorders. Here on Erase and the Stigma today, we find out what's, ha we, to find out what's happening at at the Northern Nevada Adult Mental Health Services, you just ask Roz Reynolds, right? That's correct. To, to find out what's happening at the Deany Townsend Hospital, oh, oh, wow, you ask Karen Cromie or, or Tina, Tina at the switchboard, that's who I ask. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what's happening at the, on the legislative front in mental health for the state of Nevada, you ask Harold Cook, Dr. Harold Cook, who we just happen to have with us today at the Syncat Studio here on March 27, 2009. With a countdown progressing, right Harold? Progressing toward the legislature, legislature's con, con, convene, or legislature finishing in, on May 30th, I believe, right? I believe it's June 1st, is, is it? the, the, the okay, last okay. day. June 30th, mm -hmm. J, May, about that time. So we're about halfway through, or? That's correct. Somewhere halfway through. So Ger Harold, I'm glad that you can be with us here today. Um, how's everything going um, in your first this year first legislative session as commissioner? They call it commissioner in many states, or um, mm -hmm. the administrator for mental health and developmental services. It's been very busy. Um, there's, there's a ton of stuff to do. There's a ton of things to keep track of. Uh, so far, I think it's been a fairly uh, at this point, it's been fairly successful. There are several bills that uh, have been voted on out of their initial committee in a positive way. Uh, we, there are several bills that uh, needed to be amended before I was comfortable with them, and those amendments uh, were put into the bills. Good. Other bills that we proposed uh, have um, also been successfully uh, voted on. Uh, so at this point, uh, in that respect, uh, it's been it's been good. The um, budget uh, aspects are are mixed because of the budget, the the financial situation of the state. Uh, we we went into the session uh, with a budget that was, uh, if I can remember correctly, about sixty million dollars less than what we went into what we came out of in 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had to make some hard choices about where we were going to make uh, cuts and stuff like that. Um, we had a budget hearing earlier this week on Tuesday, as a matter of fact, and if there is money available, the legislature would like to put some things back into services, back into mental health developmental services, mm -hmm. and they developed uh, a list of a prioritized list of stuff that they would like to add back in if there is money available uh, at the end of the session. Okay, so they're, they're coming up with lists 
for things that we can put back in. We're hoping, I read in the newspaper, my next question, I read in the Gazette Journal just yesterday that this stuff is happening, that that there's more lot more and more likelihood that the that the 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 budget for mental health will be more or less turned over to the legislature and and maybe less on the executive side. That's that's the indication that the that the end of the the article indicated. Does uh, that make you sense? know, as you know, what happens at the beginning of the leg at the beginning of the legislature, the governor uh, submits his budget, the governor's recommended budget. And then at that point, which is which was the beginning of February, the legislature begins to hold hearings to analyze the governor's recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, it is during this process that the legislature can make changes to the governor's budget. Uh, and that's what they're doing right now. They are making changes to the governor's budget and they will develop their own budget by the end of the session. Mm -hmm. they, can, uh, they can take stuff out of the governor's budget, they can add stuff to the governor's budget. Uh, what they, uh, they, they can do a lot of different things. What they have to do by the end of the session though is have a balanced budget. So whatever they come up with in terms of um, state programs, say they want to spend two billion dollars of state money, they have to come up with two billion dollars of revenue, of taxes, in order to fund that. that mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the final step, is to, is to find uh, all the money that they, they will need to fund the programs that they, that they have put in, mm -hmm. into the budget. And and we heard testimony, not testimony, but we heard some of the legislative, and then you, I think I'm, I'm sure you were in the room when um, the, one of the one of the legislators who's on the the um, uh, the, the taxation committee, Bob Coffin, I believe he's the chair of the taxation committee. Yes, he, he said we don't want to roll back times to 1991. He said we're going to try our best. Um, to to not roll to roll back mm. not to roll back times in 1991, and I, I think that speaks volumes for for preservation yeah. of some of our services. Yeah. yeah, nobody in the legislature has told me that they are happy with cutting services um, uh, at all. No, nobody. Uh, um, they are all very much interested in uh, preserving as much as they possibly can. There's a lot of support in the legislature for human services program, including mental health, developmental services, and substance abuse. So we have a ton of support. The, as I said earlier, the only question is, we <laughs> where do we get that ton of money that needs to be part of that support? And that's what they're looking at. That's, they will they will close budgets within the next two weeks. Uh, all the budgets will will be finalized. Then they will add up what what all that uh, all that stuff uh, co comes to in terms of cost. And then the, the last part of the legislature will be trying to find the money to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, um, as I said, we've seen bipartisan support. I think mm, yes, that have. is, we've seen it on both sides of the, both sides of the, and um, well, on a local issue. Let's move on to local stuff. Last night, we heard from one of your, well, your employees, mm. Rangel Yorks, who is the coordinator of the PAC program and also the coordinator of a new program called MOST, the Mobile Outreach Safety Team. At our at our NAMI meeting, our monthly NAMI meeting, and um, we're we're hoping that that by putting out more, I know this is I'm not sure where my question is leading, but I'm hoping you've heard of this, and and we'll be able to to talk to. I think I think you spoke with my wife earlier a little bit about it, but do you think do you think having um, uh, an extra van that that has Ability to reach out to some of the people along the homeless, cor the the mentally ill homeless along the corridor, could be. Uh, Patrick O'Brien seems to feel. Officer O'Brien seems to feel that it'll be very helpful. Mm -hmm. 
in the 2007 legislature, we actually asked for this program, and it was funded. Mm -hmm. We uh, the most pro we didn't have the name at that time. I, I forgot what what we were calling it, but we did ask for two positions to uh, be paired with uh, local law enforcement to uh, do this community outreach am among the, the homeless uh, uh, individuals in, in the community, uh, provide services, or, or maybe not even provide services, but hook people up with services, give them an idea of what's available, try to get them engaged in, in services. Uh, we, the program was uh, funded by the legislature in 2007. It never got started never got because started. Uh, the uh, we started cutting budgets almost immediately. And the first, when, when you start cutting budgets, the first thing you look at are programs that are funded but haven't started because that, that, that has less of an impact. So, mm -hmm. so the most program uh, was, was initially it was delayed. And then we've, we've gone through four or five uh, rounds of budget cuts and by the time we came to the end, we just, there just wasn't enough money to keep it going. But there was a, um, a settlement uh, in terms of um, a, a company, a f uh, insurance company taking over another insurance company, essentially. And as part of that settlement, it's called the United Health Settlement, the state got $15 million, I think. Uh, uh, to allow this uh, merger to, to happen. Part of that $15 million is going to fund the MOST program for two years. So we will have it for two years on this uh, temporary funding uh, out of this settlement. Now, it, 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 might, uh, it might continue after that. The, the 2011 legislature will take a look at it and they may decide to, to continue it. This is a great opportunity. It seems like a, I mean, it could be very effective. It, it, I think it'll be because very it, helpful. It, it gets, it helps people right at the level where they're where they're supposed to be, mm -hmm. where they or they're found. I mean, where they're and and when it came at an opportune time because the homeless population is is so much. It's in, growing. In, in growing. Yeah, yeah. and you, yeah, we've had the tent cities out there by. Um, by the uh, Record Street uh, facility, and uh, you know, the, um, and th this is a this is a national uh, phenomenon. Tent cities are growing up all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. In Sacramento, there's a huge uh, tent city that they that uh, the governor of California, Governor Schwarzenegger, has gone in and take a, taken a look at, and what they are going to do is relocate all of those people if they choose to do so to a, um, some sort of a coliseum in Sacramento, mm -hmm. uh, give them free room and board. Um, but you know, those, these kind of ten cities are growing up all over the place. If people are losing their jobs, they're losing their homes, they're becoming, whole families are becoming homeless. Uh, so this is, this is a great time to have this sort of outreach so that we can um, provide people at least with the information about what services are available, where, where they can go for services. Uh, um, and uh, if necessary, um, you know, these staff can do legal 2000s if there's a danger to self or others as a result of mental because illness. one of the staff is an AMS person. But well, both of them will be. Well, there's two people, mm. but, right. but the, one of them will be a CIT officer. Right, right. One, yeah. Usually it'll be a driving tandem. Right. Because Patrick O'Brien, Officer O'Brien talked last night, he says, I'm, I'm the the gorilla. He's the muscle. He's the muscle. Mm -hmm. And then when when the, the the gal, the woman that was hired, Lisa Latham, mm -hmm. she comes up and says, "Could we help you with some services?" And he's and he stands behind her and says, "We will help. We will help." <laughs> yeah, so I'm doing the Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. So uh -huh. I think it works. Yeah, I think that's a that's a that's a really good pairing, uh, and it will probably make uh, make a huge difference in in some people's lives. Okay. Do you want to get Big Moosey? Big Eagle, come on, Big Eagle, Big Bird, you only got a minute. Go oh. for it, Big Eagle. Yeah, there's a Big Eagle. Big Eagle, come on, Big Eagle. Big Eagle. Big Eagle. <laughs> big Eagle, he's hesitating. He's going uh, to poop. He's he's poop. trying. Oh. oh, we missed. Come on, Big Eagle, Big Eagle. <laughs> All right. That's what happens sometimes. But. Uh -huh. 
when when you get them up to exercise, you know that's what happens. Okay, obedient one. Come here. Come here. He's a trained bird. Mm -hmm. He's a trained bird. Obedient one. Come on, do it one more time. Obedient one. Come here. Good. Okay. And then I go. Um, I say for a trip to Hawaii. Name this song. Sing, Mushy, sing. <laughs> Can you name that song? I can't name it. <laughs> it's a macaw talking, so oh. <laughs> go figure. Sing, Mushy, sing. <laughs> let's share my sunshine, of oh. course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see. Uh, um, did you know this is a big hummingbird? <laughs> He's a hummer. He's a hummer. <laughs> okay, and then uh, let's see, one more thing. Okay, and when I retire from state government, I'm going to say it again. When I retire from state government, I'm going to rest. 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 Okay, rest. that I got. <laughs> that's my. That's my and, plan. And that's probably the lead into the next question. But let's see what I can get him to. Uh, okay. Um, Barack Obama is president of the United States. So Barack Obama, here would you <laughs> salute? <laughs> and then we'll do. Let's see what we'll do. The division administrator, Dr. Harold S. Cook, is here. What do you do? <laughs> Salute. Well, we got you in there anyway. All right. Okay. Let's, and then out. So many big ones. Let's see if we can do this one. This is, this is of course, a scratch, but hanging around with Big Missy. There he is. Hanging around with Big Missy. <laughs> and then, what's this? This is a bird in hands for two in the bush. They love this at the hospital. Oh, yeah? Well, they love this. Uh -huh. How could you see anything but it? But a big African or a big green and macaw talking. Good bird. Good bird. <laughs> That's just a little minute of stardom. Uh, he only scraped me a little bit. Pretty good, big bird. Pretty good. How old is he? He's eight years old. Eight? He's, and then these, these guys live forever, don't they? Oh, yeah. This, yeah. this bird could live for 100 years. Yeah. They could. He's a good bird. He's a good bird. Okay. And like I said, I'm, 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 I appreciate that, that I'm able to bring them in to do, to, because how many places could you, inpatient, inpatients could see a, a, a an African gray parrot, a green or macaw, and a, mm -hmm. and a, um, you know, and, and, and pa patients, it transcends care a little bit too, because patients actually say, wow, you know, we loved your birds, yeah. and I mean, and I think, I think they really mean that, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of patients have animals, I talked to, to one guy today that would that had an animal that that um, that he was trying to bond with again and yeah. and we have we have animal sometimes we have where the humane society has to get involved because animals are left at home left, too. yeah they're left alone yeah. left alone and so okay well let's let's move right along um, okay um, by way of sharing what's been going on with me Harold I am again this year taking on taking my recovery talk on the road. Mm -hmm. I've spoken before the UNR classes, the medical school, the National Judicial College. I'm really proud yeah. of that for district, for not district court judges, but for specialty court judges. Yeah. And I'm getting the word out um, that recovery is to be expected, not just, not just a, you know, recovery is to be mm -hmm. expected. And for many of us, CSAs, you know where this is leading, for many of us CSAs, uh, we will again be scheduling or doing quali speak, um, spearheading quality assurance work where you see w where we get to do the CAP program gets gets involved and does quality assurance and, and that's what we're funded for federally for that reason to some degree. Um, do you think that the that CSAs are a viable treatment option? Do you see our program growing? This is kind of a personal question, but do you see CSAs as an efficient, effective type of part of the service delivery system? Oh yeah, I think they've been enormously uh, beneficial to uh, to the division um, to the, in terms of um, providing a, uh, a connection to individuals who might not feel comfortable and a lot of people don't feel comfortable with uh, services when they first start. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, drop-in center at NAMS has just been, I, thought, I think, one of the best things that's ever happened to NAMS. Uh, the uh, the ability of uh, CSAs across the state 
to to do some of that quality assurance stuff you talked about, like the um, consumer surveys that you guys will be starting real soon. That is that's critical because um, without CSAs, the surveys would need to be done by service coordinators or clinicians, and there's always the fear that when a service coordinator or clinician does this, tries to do a survey with a client, that the client will feel pressure to, to respond very positively. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we don't like, we don't want to, we, don't, we want to get the truth from people. We want to know what's good and what's bad. And we, so, um, I, you know, I, I, I see CSAs as just a, a critical feature of, uh, uh, of all of our programs. I think you ask if um, I see the program growing, and I, um, no, no program is going to be growing for a while, mm -hmm. and I don't, I can't tell you for how long. But, but we are cost effective, I think, because because mm -hmm. we're not, I mean, we're not, you know, I mean, uh, there's one in, on camera here, and I know he he's part time and he's not making a good deal of money, but he's but he's really working his tail off, right. you know, and yeah. and so I think, I, I mean, I, th I think we're not we're not paid a lot, but but we try and do a good job. I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, so yeah, um, and so I, I don't see the program in jeopardy, obviously. Um, but as I said, um, there are no no mental health programs that are going to be um, growing very much, if any, uh, in the, at least for the next two years. And um, yeah, we just have to wait and see what happens in 2011. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, also, by saying of what I'm up to. Um, this year at the Na at the National NAMI convention, it's in San Francisco this year, and um, um, we're planning to to go with our with our usual delegation from from NAMI Northern Nevada and NAMI and NAMI Southern Nevada, but um, 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 it's 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 in July it's July sixth through the tenth, I believe, mm -hmm. in San Francisco, and I'm wondering whether you might see it. Feasible for some, since it's right over the hill, you know, it's feasible for some employees to attend as a training, as part of a training. We don't have uh, within the, within the division a lot of out of state travel funding for that sort That's of thing. True, yeah, yeah so um, you know, certainly each agency director can take a look at that and see if it's it's if it's feasible, but uh, out of state. Uh, out-of-state travel, especially right now, where when we are so short on money, it um, not only is difficult to fund it, but it also um, is discouraged because it looks bad to have state employees traveling on taxpayer uh, funds, and especially the, especially the cities like San Francisco and that kind of stuff. You know, um, when uh, Big banks who have been taking federal funds, taxpayer money, uh, scheduled uh, events in, in Las, Las Vegas and, and stuff like that. The, uh, there was a huge public uproar about using um, tax money to fund uh, these getaways to these ni nice places like Miami and Las Vegas and San Francisco. So we've been told that we have to be really careful about, about using state money to send people uh, on uh, on trips. Okay, okay. I guess that's a, a no then. Probably at this Probably point it is. Yeah, it would. It, it, no, it's not a categorical no, but it's it's it's. I'm saying it's it's unlikely. Let's move into something that, that that's been long overdue. That I think that, I, and I've heard that that your your strategy and your planning worked in this case. Um, I've heard that um, that the Folks get um, people getting held up in the emergency rooms in Southern Nevada. This is a, this was an issue that was really in the news uh, two three years ago, mm -hmm. where they were backed up in the emergency rooms. That has eased to some degree. Can you can you speak to what what the weight is now for for the average weight for somebody getting trying to get into into one of the state hospital not. Not rooms, but I guess mm. it's at the POU, right? Yeah. It's at the, the observation yeah, unit. Because the you increased the, the observation unit beds. Right. Tell me how that worked out. Uh, what, I didn't uh, explain that good. But. Okay. The, just in terms of background, uh, in 2006, 
2006, we opened uh, the Ross and Neal Hospital, which is a brand new 190 bed facility. It's, it's the big brother to Deany Townsend here in the south, I mean here in the north. Um, and we kept open some uh, beds in the old hospital. So right now we have a total of 234 hospital beds, state hospital beds mm -hmm. in, in uh, Clark County. Originally when... Which, which I could say is still way under the, st the national average. Way under the national average. Way under average. the I think it's six beds per 100,000 or seven beds or something like that. Something, yeah. And which is, and the national average is 22, so, like, yeah. so we're still real poor, but mm -hmm. we're doing better anyway. So. <laughs> doing better than what we did, what we were. Yeah. Um, when, uh, when, when the hospital opened, it had a 30-bed POU built into it, just in the uh, same design as uh, Deany Townsend. Uh, and we ran it that way for about a year, uh, which is about the uh, when I, I came on board, and it, and it just wasn't working as well as it should because there were still a lot of people waiting uh, in, the, um, in the emergency room. So the staff down there decided that they would take one of the inpatient units and convert that inpatient unit into a POU, and that's an additional 20 POU beds. Mm -hmm. Uh, and since then, and, since, and I believe that happened uh, in the uh, fall of last year, um, October, November, somewhere in, the, in that area. Since then, the number of people waiting has really uh, been kept down. Um, and if some, it, it has sometimes fallen into the single digits. There have been times when there was nobody uh, uh, Actually, uh, in line to come to come to uh, Ross and Neal, uh, and but typically people are waiting now uh, maybe 24, 30 hours for a bed, whereas three years ago they were waiting three, four, five days for a bed. Mm -hmm. So that has really uh, helped a lot. It it you know it it's still sort of a, a seasonal sort of thing. Sometimes when the weather gets really bad. Um, the the number of people waiting in the emergency rooms will will go up. It's sort of like um, mental illness is a function of the weather, and some for some people it is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, it uh, I don't think we'll ever get back to the point uh, where we have 150 people waiting three and four days for for a hospital bed, for a psychiatric hospital bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. I mean, because that was that was really unacceptable. That yeah. was mm -hmm. that was that was uh, that was awful. Yeah, terrible, it was. It terrible was thing for creating a, for a, to, a to public health them. disaster for the South and you know, um, public not, public health. Yeah, yeah. Not, not only were people waiting for psychiatric hospital beds, but people were waiting to get people with heart attacks, people with serious illnesses and injuries were waiting for emergency room beds. And they they were their 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 um, treatment was being delayed because of this huge back uh, log jam of um, people uh, with mental illness uh, uh, being kept in the emergency rooms for days and days at a time. You know, for for any one of us who goes to an emergency room with say an injury or or an illness, we're typically in a, a in, a, in an emergency room bed for a few hours. It may seem like days, um, mm -hmm. but we're there for a few hours and we're either then admitted to the hospital or we're discharged and, and we're sent home. You know, when somebody is there for two, three, four days, mm -hmm. that means that uh, a dozen people who could have been treated in that bed were not treated. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we, so we haven't solved it, but, but it's much better. It's been We've addressed it. Thanks okay. for being on. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Yeah, no. I'm just an ordinary person. I'm erasing the stigma. Who you think I am? I'm erasing the stigma. Yeah.
Passing on the 